This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers. There are many varieties of thought concerning which day to observe as a religious rest day. Some call Sunday their Sabbath, while the Muslims, well, they consider Friday. And the Jews, they observe a Saturday Sabbath. So how does one know which day is correct? The Bible clearly points out the fourth commandment to remember the Sabbath day clearly refers to a Friday sunset to Saturday sunset period. Why, even Jesus claimed he was the Lord of that specific Sabbath. So, who changed it? Why was it changed? And shouldn't we be following Jesus' example instead of what traditional Christian denominations teach? These are questions we'll address on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our families, to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Mike James. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Armor of God. We're glad you could join us for today's program. What we're going to be talking about today is the Sabbath. Is the Sabbath Sunday? Is the Sabbath Friday? Is the Sabbath Saturday? There is some disagreement when you look at the major Western religions on which day is the proper Sabbath. And we're going to talk about that today. Now, when you look at Islam, they go to prayer on Friday. That is a major day for them during the week. But you will find that they don't say that that necessarily is the Sabbath day during the week. And we're going to give you some evidence to prove that. When you look at Judaism, they definitely say that the Sabbath is Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. And then when we go to Christianity, you will find some Christians, like those of us here at the Church of God International, we do believe that Friday sunset to Saturday sunset is the Sabbath. But most Christians, you will find, will argue that the Sabbath is Sunday. So we're going to look at this question today and delve into it a little bit more. We'll look at the relevant scripture within the Quran dealing with that Friday day of prayer. Why do they choose that day? We'll look at the relevant scriptures in the Bible, in the New Testament, that refer to the first day of the week, which is Sunday. And we'll take a look and see, is there evidence within the pages of your Bible that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday? Because all of these religions agree that originally the Sabbath, which began at creation, was a Friday sunset to Saturday sunset Sabbath. And speaking about that beginning, let me just turn over to Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3, and read it for you. It says there, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended His work which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had made. And get this, And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that in it He had rested from all His work which God created and made. Now get the significance of this. God is resting after the creation, and He's sanctifying this particular day. Now, if God sanctifies something, I don't want to mess with that. Are we messing with the Sabbath by saying it is now on a Sunday? If some Muslims argue that the proper day of rest is on Friday, are they messing with what God has said here right from the beginning of the book of Genesis? And Muslims will agree that this is Scripture. Christians will agree this is Scripture. And Jews agree that this is Scripture. So we're going to look at this particular issue on today's program. 
Before we do that, though, what I'd like to do is offer you some free literature and also a free full-length sermon CD. So what we'd like to offer you on today's program is a pamphlet, and this pamphlet is entitled, Sunday, Saturday, What Difference Does It Make? Now, we'll get into this particular pamphlet, which is really important if you want to study this issue. The vast majority of professing Christianity believes Sunday is the day for Christian worship. But Seventh-day Adventists, Seventh-day Baptists, those of us here at the Church of God International believe that it is Saturday and that Christians should abstain from working from our Friday sunset until Saturday sunset. Is there any Bible proof for Sabbath observance? Or does the Bible say that Christians should worship on Sunday? Get this pamphlet to find out more about this important subject. We also want you to get our free full-length sermon CD. It's titled, Sabbath, A Memorial Connection. And this is done by one of our commentators here, Mr. Bill Watson. Get this CD to understand about the significance that God has on the Sabbath right from the pages of your Bible. To get both of these items free of charge, all you need to do is call us at 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can go to our website to order there. Go to www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. You can also go to our website to learn more about our weekly sermon broadcast. Go to www.cgi.org. Welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you could join us on today's program. The subject of today's program is the Sabbath. Which day is the Sabbath? That's the question we're looking at today. And what we said at the top of today's program was, when you look at the major Western religions, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all of them have a reverence for what we call the Bible. And we here at the Church of God International believe that if you just base your belief on the Bible, you have to come to the conclusion that the Sabbath referred to in the Bible is Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. Now, we're going to look at some scriptures in the New Testament that deal with the first day of the week, which is Sunday, which many Christians observe as the Sabbath. Is there any evidence in the New Testament for observing Sunday as the Sabbath? I will submit to you that there is not. We will also look at what the Quran has to say on why Muslims keep Friday as their day of rest, and we will see there that there is no change to the Sabbath there also. So let's begin, and, and let's start with the Muslims. We're going to go and tell you what is in the Quran about this Friday day of worship that the Muslims have. And in some countries that are Muslim countries, like Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bangladesh, they actually have Friday as a day off. They will not work on that particular day. But interestingly enough, that is not true in the entire Muslim world. You will find in some countries in the Muslim world, they do not take a full day off on Friday, which is the go to the mosque day. Now I want to read you something. I'm going to quote it exactly from the Quran. It's in Shura 62.9 in the Quran, and it says this. It says, when the call is proclaimed to prayer on Friday, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off business. That is best for you if ye but knew. Now here's what the next verse says. When prayer is ended, then disperse in the land. Now some Muslims read this and say, this is not telling me that this is a Sabbath day, that this is a rest day, that I may, must rest from all my labors. It definitely is calling Muslims to prayer on Friday, but there is no change to the Sabbath day in the Quran. This is the relevant scripture on that. Friday is a day of prayer. In some Muslim countries, it is a day off, 
but there is no change to the Sabbath day in the Quran. Now I want to turn my attention to the Bible from here on out on the program and we're going to focus in on what Christians think about this particular day and the relevant scriptures will be found in the New Testament. Now at the top of today's program we read to you Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 and we saw that God established the Sabbath day as a marker, as a memorial for the creation that He had created. He sanctified that particular day. In order for someone to have the, the idea that they would change something like that, they better have some good evidence for changing that. And you're going to find in the Word of God, if you believe the Bible is the Word of God, you will not find that evidence of a change to the Sabbath. Now let's try to prove that point to you. I'm going to move over into the New Testament now and I'm going to read or briefly take a look at the relevant scriptures in the New Testament that mention the first day of the week. Now that might cause some confusion with some of you out there. You won't find the word Sunday in your Bible. You will find Sunday referred to in your Bible as the first day of the week. So that is why I will be focusing on that particular phrase. Now let's take a look at this. I'm going to start out in the book of Matthew and I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. Matthew 28 and verse 1. And what you're going to find is that in many of these scriptures, in many of these scriptures, there is no changing of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. I want you to be the judge of that as we go through this. So let's begin here in Matthew 28, 1. It says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So this is after Jesus' death. Three days and three nights later, these women are coming to the tomb. Now the reason they're coming early on the first day of the week is because they observed the Sabbath. All right, They were observing that Sabbath that God had ordained many years ago. That Sabbath that was in the law of God that Moses had delivered to the people. That's why they were coming on this particular morning to see the tomb. That's all it says there, folks. It doesn't say anything about a change from Saturday to Sunday. I'm going to move forward in the synoptics, the synoptic Gospels, over to Mark, and we're going to go to Mark 16 and verse 2, and we will see the first day of the week referenced twice in this chapter. Mark 16, 2. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Once again, folks, no mention of any change here that the first day of the week is now the day we're going to observe the Sabbath. Dropping down to verse 9 of the same chapter of Mark 16. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom He had cast seven devils. Now some people argue, well, Jesus rose on Sunday morning. So that's why we keep the Sabbath. But once again, you will not find that evidence in your Bible. We've done other programs on that specific topic. And some will cite this scripture where it says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, but listen to what I said. When Jesus was risen, when they got to the tomb, they found that it was empty. Jesus didn't say, I rose this morning and now you must change the Sabbath to Sunday. That's nowhere in your Bible. No such statement is made. You will find if you do research on this that years later the church made Sunday into the Sabbath. The church did that, ladies and gentlemen, not God. God set up the Sabbath. God created this Sabbath. I'm not going to tell God that I'm not going to observe His Sabbath if that's part of His law. I'm going to let God decide how He will be worshipped, in what manner. And your Bible is clear on this matter that the Sabbath is Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. 
Now moving forward, let's take a look at one of the other Gospel writers. Let's see if there's any change in Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Luke 24 verse 1, we're looking at the Synoptic Gospels as they address the first day of the week. And Luke 24 and verse 1 is very similar to what we've just read. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Once again, you can read the entire chapter of Luke 24. Go back and read all of Mark 16. Read all of Matthew 28. And nowhere in there is there any great significance placed on the fact that they were there on the first day of the week other than just a marker chronologically as where we were in time. You will find significance about the Sabbath throughout the Bible on why it is important to continue to observe that particular day. So let's move on. There are a few other mentionings of the first day of the week in the Bible. We'll move over to the Gospel of John and we'll pick it up there in John chapter 20 and verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Once again, a mentioning of the first day of the week, but no great significance that there was any change due to the fact that Jesus was now out of that particular tomb. We want to drop down into verse 19 of this same chapter, John chapter 20, and notice this is later on the same day. It's still Sunday. Then the same day at evening, so this is getting late in the afternoon, right before darkness, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. So Jesus appears to them on this Sunday, late in the afternoon, as it's becoming early evening. But once again, Jesus doesn't say anything here. You can read the rest of chapter 20. Jesus doesn't say, now that I have risen, I am demanding that you make Sunday into the Sabbath day. That's not there, folks. It's not in your Bible. The church changed the Sabbath. They changed it from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset to a Sunday Sabbath. And I, I submit to you that they don't have permission to do that. That's my submission to you. When I read the pages of this Bible, you don't alter God's law. You don't alter what God has set up from creation. This is a memorial occurrence. God has set this up from creation. There's a specific reason why He chose that day. It has great symbolic significance for what's going to happen in that kingdom of God that's going to come on this earth and that God is going to reign upon this earth for a thousand years. This all works together and relates back to that original Sabbath day. Get that information that we are offering you on today's program. But let's look further. There are a couple other scriptures that mention the first day of the week. Is there any change involved here? Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. We're going to take a look at Acts chapter 7 and verse 20. Listen to what it says. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. Now, he's definitely preaching and teaching to them on the first day of the week, which obviously is a Sunday. But ladies, ladies and gentlemen, what Paul is doing here is he's just talking to these folks about God's truth, about that gospel message. No real problem there. Paul did that on many days. But it's significant that he went to worship on the Sabbath, even in New Testament times, even in the book of Acts, which I will show you momentarily. Now, there is one final scripture, and some folks do seize upon this phrase, breaking of bread, believing that's a communion type of a ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking of bread does not mean it's a communion ceremony. It merely means they were having a meal as they gathered together. One more scripture to show you here in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 2 that speaks of the first day of the week. 1 Corinthians 16 
and verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. What was going on here is they were taking up a collection for the churches. Now, they were doing it on the first day of the week because that's when business got going again, after the Sabbath day. So this does not say anything about having a church service or changing the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Now, we've looked at all the relevant scriptures in the New Testament on the first day of the week, on Sunday, and none of them say anything about God altering the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. What you will find in the New Testament record in the book of Acts is that the disciples, after Jesus' death, continued to observe that Saturday Sabbath day. And let me show you some of the evidence. Let me show you some of the evidence right from your Bible in Acts chapter 16 and verse 13. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. This is talking about a gathering occurring on the Sabbath day, a, a gathering where prayer was wont to be made, so it was some type of religious meeting that's occurring on the Sabbath day. Notice the significance of mentioning that Sabbath day here. And let me tell you, Sabbath in your Bible means Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. You can do the research on that within the commentaries that are out there. But notice, notice again in Acts chapter 13 and in verse 42, Acts 13 and verse 42, it says the following, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The next Sabbath. Why would these Gentiles ask that these words be spoken to them about the gospel message on the next Sabbath? Because even Gentiles who believed in God were coming to the synagogue to hear about God's message. And notice verse 44, same chapter, chapter 13 of Acts. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Folks, after Jesus' death, the day that people are gathering to hear the word of God continues to be the Sabbath day, which would be our Saturday today. Another example of this can be found over in Acts chapter 17, and there are numerous other examples. Acts chapter 17, I'm going to pick it up there in verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, as his manner was, years after Jesus' death, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Now let me ask you a question. If the Sabbath had been changed, if Jesus had changed the Sabbath, why are they continuing to reason to people out of the Scriptures on the Sabbath day? Couldn't they say to these people, hey, let's talk to you on Monday about this. Let me get you on a Tuesday. How about a Wednesday? No, they did not do that. They went to preach and teach on the Sabbath because that was the day they respected. That was the day they knew from the law that God had set apart as being the worship day of God, the Tetragrammaton, the YHWH. And that's why they continued to abide by that years after Jesus' death. There is no change to the Sabbath day in the pages of your Bible. Even Jesus did not change the Sabbath day. And some will cite in Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, let's take a look at it. We'll go back to Mark chapter 2. And I'm going to pick it up there in verse 23. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. This is Jesus and his disciples. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? Now listen to who's saying this. The Pharisees are saying this isn't lawful on the Sabbath day. 
Do you find that in the Old Testament? No, it's not there. You do not find this in the Old Testament that the Sabbath, that it wasn't lawful to pick corn on the Sabbath day. Notice what Jesus says in verse 25. And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and was not hungered, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and did eat the shoe bread. Jesus doesn't have any problem with the Sabbath day. He's not, this is a perfect opportunity for Jesus to say, it doesn't matter which day you worship me. This is a perfect opportunity for Jesus to say, oh, you can now worship the Sabbath on a Sunday. But he doesn't say it. He's with the idea that you continue to observe the Sabbath, and other, Christ, other scriptures bear that out. The point he's making here is their understanding of how to keep the Sabbath was incorrect. And he begins to set them straight here with what he says. Jesus is not doing away with the Sabbath day. There's no way you can get that from this scripture, although some people will try to do that. Now, as we start to wind things down on today's program, I don't have time to read this, but I would ask you to read Hebrews chapter 4. Go there and read in verse 9 where it talks about there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That's coming from New Testament scriptures. Write in your Bible, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 9. As I said from the start of the program, God set up the Sabbath as a memorial for creation. In Exodus chapter 20, we read in the Ten Commandment law of God that God established the Sabbath as a rest day. He tells us to work on the other six days of the week, but we must rest on this particular Sabbath. And nowhere in your Bible, nowhere from beginning to end in your Bible, does it do away with the worship of the Sabbath day, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. I'd like you to get that free literature we talked about at the top of today's program. I want you to get Sunday, Saturday, what difference does it make? I also want you to get that CD by Mr. Bill Watson. It's titled Sabbath, A Memorial Connection. This will help supplement what I've been talking about on today's program. Please get that CD, please get that literature, and we offer other literature and other CDs on those same programs. Go to www.cgi.org or call us toll free at 1-888-578-8791. 1-888-578-8791 or go to the website www.cgi.org to order that CD, to order that literature. I want to thank you all for joining us on another edition of the Armor of God. Please get that literature. Please get that CD. Learn more about the Sabbath day. So long for now. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas 75701 or call toll free at 1-888-578-8791 or call 1-903-939-2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.